Thank you so much for being here. Um, we are going to share with you about our organization, and then we're also going to be able to talk to you about a wonderful opportunity for the teams that we work with, but we're also talking to you as corporate partners in the community, so we want to hear about the needs that you have so we can share those to our young change makers. So we're going to tell you about the organization first, and then after talking to you about the organization, we have just a little bit of an icebreaker here that we're going to do. But um, as far as philanthropy tank is concerned, we have been around for six years. We serve teens who have social impact program ideas that address issues facing our community. And from those ideas, there's an opportunity to apply to be a change maker and receive support both from an award that helps fund the project, as well as receiving mentorship from one of the philanthropists in the community. Uh, we actually happen to have one of our philanthropists with us today, who's also the co-founder of Philanthropy Tank, and that's Michael Kroner. So Michael can come up and they can just wave for us. Do you want to come up and say something? <laughs> Putting Michael on the spot, but we're live. Um, but Michael is co-founder of the organization and also himself this past year has served as one of our investors, our philanthropist investors, which we'll talk about a little bit more later, but is working with one of our student programs called Stand Up and Count It. So any words you'd like to share about your experience? It's definitely very rewarding. I mean, it's, you know, it's uh, seeing the program start from a concept, then get coached, then mentored, and then implemented, and seeing what some of these have truly made an impact on our local communities. I mean, the kids grow, but the thing is not just about the kids, it's about their ideas, and then seeing it the time to task as those kids go off to college. It's been a pretty successful transition, and it's been now that we've been year six in a second location, I mean, I think it's just, we're scratching the surface of what the future of philanthropy tank can be. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for joining us, Michael. I feel like it's an interview show. <laughs> so now, since we have a couple of our friends here from, would you want to come up and you can tell us, participate in this icebreaker, that way people can see you, Marcus. Um, but why don't you share your name and the name of your organization? How you doing? My name is Mr. Mark Darisol. The name of the organization is EJS Project. We're located in Mary Beach off Atlantic and on the 7th Ave. And what does your organization do? So we help our possible teens with scholarships, internships, and community service hours. We're just here to provide them with the guidance and just mentor them and they get on the right direction. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but what do you, why do you think what you do is important? It's important because we are helping these teens grow to be better people, to be um, young men and young women, and we're helping out our um, whole community, help them out. They need help. Like I see one of the questions is during the pandemic, yeah, what we do do um, we um, served meals during the pandemic. We did care packages. We um. They drive through food distributions, you know, just getting where we can help people with um, lights, water, um, housing grants, be on them certain. And EJS, I don't know if it's a stand, is it an acronym? Does it stand yes. for a Yes, Emmanuel Jackson Senior. So it's, a C, it's a CEO, it's his father. Gotcha, okay, great. Well, wonderful for joining us, we appreciate it. No problem, thanks for having us. We can just mention as many of you were engaged, as Marcus just mentioned, during the pandemic and helping to serve the community. A lot of our needs shifted. A lot of things obviously had to change based on the pandemic in terms of um, how we delivered our services, what the services actually were, what the needs were in the community. And as we talk, these are the things that we try to share with our students when they're coming up with their ideas of how they want to work with the community. So I already shared a few things, but as I mentioned about us, we've been around for, uh, at, this is actually coming up on our seventh year in Palm Beach County. A couple of years ago, we also expanded and we're serving students in Baltimore. One of our founders grew up, uh, or raised his family in Baltimore, and had been there and was very tied to the community, so we started the organization there a couple of years back, and we have our first uh, team cohort in Baltimore as well. So, 
The idea is again to help those students who are teenagers in 8th through 12th grade who have ideas to help in their communities. A lot of the times when we talk, and I know that Corey, our program director, is going to speak a little bit later, but when we talk to these students, we're talking to them about what are they passionate about in the community. Um, that could be animals, that could be the environment, that could be their family, but we want to talk to them about what moves them and then also what troubles them. And a lot of times we say to them, if you had unlimited resources and you could do something, what would you do? What would you change? What would you want to help? And so those are the ways a lot of our discussions start. And from that, we're really excited that since we've started, we've launched 55 programs. We have over 500 students that have gone through the program. That doesn't account for the clubs they've created and other volunteers they've recruited to deliver their service programs. But a lot of people are engaged and these are people that we call our youth change makers. The other thing we should mention is that we're really focused on the sustainability of these organizations. So it's not just conceptual that we're looking for the idea. Our hope is that years and years later, these programs are still going to be active and still serving their communities. So sustainability is a large part of thinking through the process of applying for the program. Um, we're very excited that a third of our programs have become their own nonprofit organizations, and that quite a bit of the students now have become alumni. They started and uh, you know when they were in high school and now they've moved on to college they've developed chapters they've come back to mentor other students that are going through the program and as i mentioned baltimore was launched so those are a couple key things about what we do uh, from a sustainability factor we have about 85 percent i think now we're even 88 percent of the programs that are started that are still active that means they may have gone through succession of new leadership but the program is still out there serving the community. We have a short video we would like to share with you that just gives an overview of what Philanthropy Tank does. Philanthropy Tank is a groundbreaking program that empowers student entrepreneurs to become leaders in our communities. These change makers are inspiring and do amazing things. Princesses Against Cancer was started by high school students who dreamed of sharing joy with children in local hospitals. Three-year-old Vanessa Garcia is battling a rare liver cancer. She always tells me she wants to go home, but when I told her about this, she was waiting happily, and I think for just a moment, it made her forget about the situation she's in. Our students also teach life-saving skills. Our pitch was to certify the community in CPR. And water safety. And we're providing them with free swim lessons that are run by teens and volunteers. Or build playgrounds. The Boundless Dreams Playground is aimed to foster inclusion and unrestricted play, and it will be the first of its kind in Delray Beach, Florida. Palm Beach Philanthropy Tank, thank you guys so much. We can't thank you guys enough. It's really cool, right? Yeah. I love it. We have empowered 77 change makers, partnered with over 100 volunteers, given over $400,000 in grants, and impacted over 200,000 lives through our student programs. These initiatives have filled 200 student backpacks with school supplies, put shoes on 1,000 needy children, and have given 200,000 people access to free sunscreen. That's just the beginning of what student organized programs have accomplished with help from Philanthropy Tank and our philanthropist investors. I really believe in giving back. Doing something for those who are less fortunate. This experience is its own reward. You hear about philanthropy, but you don't necessarily hear it in our terms of really empowering our youth. The students also benefit from joining Philanthropy Tank. They're learning leadership, team building, business, technology skills, and a whole lot more. With years of success, it's time for Philanthropy Tank to give even more. We've empowered our teens to take their ideas and grow them into great programs that are really impacting our community. They're learning mentorship skills, leadership skills, they're managing teams of people. The program is very pure, but when you see the faces and the emotions of the kids and the community that they're impacting, it's 
hard not to just get in a tremendous rush every moment I get an opportunity to participate. 6,500. 8,000. 9,000. 10,000. 14,000. We're going to give you the $15,000. With the support of Philanthropy Tank, we were able to make real change in our community. I'm so thankful for this experience and the opportunities that have come with it. Join us and become a change maker. Philanthropy Tank. So you see how our students work with their mentors, and then again, through this application process, which we're going to talk about next, you'll find out how a student who has an idea can apply and then possibly become a finalist to present their idea. So I, it's my pleasure I'm going to introduce Matthew Avila, who's our program coordinator, and he'll talk to you a little bit about the applications. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Matthew Avila. I'm the program coordinator. And so I'm going to take you a little bit through our application cycle and a little bit kind of uh, about, uh, I'll talk a little bit about our uh, finals event as well. So uh, right here is the uh, timeline. So we have a two cycle application. What that means basically is that it's split up into two uh, separate periods. The first is the summer, the second is the fall, right? The only real difference between both of these is that if you apply during the summer application period, students uh, get early notification of whether or not they are selected to go on to the next part of the application process, which includes interviews. So let's say a student applies, they aren't selected to go on to the next uh, part, the interviews, then that's good news for them that they can apply again in the fall. Right? So they don't have to wait a whole another year. They can just reapply right there and then. So that's the benefit of this uh, cycle. So um, we really encourage students to go forward with it and apply during the summer. It, you know, there's a lot of benefits behind it. This is just a quick timeline of what the application kind of entails. Right? As I mentioned, our application, it closes in, on October 23rd. Right? So from there, the applications are reviewed by our uh, committee. Uh, from there, finalists are notified anywhere between December to January. Uh, in, from January to February, uh, these finalists, which usually is between eight to 10 finalists that are selected, they go through a series of preparation workshops for what we call our finals event, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But the finals event, it usually takes place at the Craft Center and that's always in March. Right? So um, from there, if you are selected as a, if you are awarded funding, you then execute your program for one whole year uh, from 2022 to 2023. So about the finals event. Like I mentioned, the finals event takes place in March of 2022 at the Kravitz Center. Fingers crossed everything uh, back to normal by then. Uh, but basically, think of it kind of Similar to the show Shark Tank, where uh, the uh, entrepreneurs are pitching their idea to the sharks trying to get funding. Similar concept, except for the fact that students are not requesting funding for a business, right? These are social impact ideas, ways to better their community. And so that's where this uh, concept comes from. Uh, the students will pitch their idea for three minutes to individuals that we call philanthropist investors or philanthropists. Uh, Mentors, same thing. Uh, but these philanthropist investors, uh, philanthropist mentors, uh, we call them PIs, PMs for short. They have a vast experience of being actual philanthropists and entrepreneurs in their community. So you can Google them. They have, uh, you know, they they can thousands of hundreds of dollars away of their own money to causes that they really support. Right, and so. At the finals event, it's up to you as a student, as well as a community partner that knows these students to help these students to prepare for the finals event and basically help them convince these philanthropist investors that their ideas are worth funding. So that's kind of the premise behind this uh, the finals event. And I'll introduce Corey Murphy, who will be discussing a little bit more about the actual application. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Corey Murphy, the program director with Philanthropy Tank. And so uh, we're going to talk about the application, um, go through just a couple of the questions, and talk about the support that we have available for young people as they consider to apply 
to philanthropy tank. And so, um, as you see here, um, the application consists of a few different components. There is the actual application itself, where we ask for demographic information um, and ask for information about the projects the young people are proposing. And we'll go through some of those questions in a second. We also ask for young people to um, submit a video, 90 seconds, that tells, uh, that tells the story about what they are trying to do. We want to hear it from their mouths. We want to see their enthusiasm. We really want to hear it from them um, and do it within 90 seconds. So that's a component of the application. And then we also ask students to prepare a budget as uh, you know, they're, they're pitching their ideas, it's going to take money to do it. We want to see what kind of money it's going to take for them to get those, uh, to, to execute their programs. When we talk about the project proposal, we're asking for these basic things. We want them to describe the project. So tell us what you want to do, tell us um, what uh, you're going to do and how you're going to do it. We ask for um, community partners. So these are people like you and um, the people we have with us today. We're asking for um, them based on what the young person is proposing to do, um, what community partners already exist who may be working in the field, and then figuring out is there um, a way for collaboration. We want these projects based in real life not just what the students have uh, happening um, in their minds. And so community partners really help drive what the work uh, is and how it gets done. Um, we ask who you want to serve, how do you know that there's, an, that there's um, a need for the project you're doing. Um, we ask students to think about how they'll know they actually did what they set out to do, so measuring impact. And then we also ask them to think about sustainability. How will you keep this going in your absence? Um, we judge the applications based on this criteria. Um, is the project cre creative? Does it seem sustainable? Um, did you have a team of young people who help you uh, get it done? Um, what kind of impact will you have? And how creative is the um, project you propose to do? Now you might think, um, because this is an application, because it kind of reads like a grant, um, you might think we're just throwing young people to the wolves, but we aren't. We have a variety of um, workshops that we do. We have our initial philanthropy tank introductory workshop, which is something like what we're going through today. So everyone here, we've already gone through that, and we can do that with your young people. Uh, we also hold a workshop to help young people think about um, and create an idea, something that they can pitch. We've had students who come with us with ideas already baked, ready to go, and we just need to add a little salt to it. Uh, we've also had uh, students who didn't have a project idea at all. We take any young person uh, who uh, just is committed to the work. Um, we have uh, workshops on developing the budget, as that's a comport an important component to the workshop. And we also help you think through how to complete the application. For instance, if we ask you a question like, describe your project, just describe your project. Don't add anything else to the application. And so um, these are just some ways that we work with young people um, to help guide them through the process because it can seem like it's uh, a lot of work to do, and we are asking young people to do work and research as they create um, the projects they're going to eventually pitch. But um, by the end of all of this, if they uh, join us on this journey, they will have tight projects that are very competitive, and we always look forward uh, to awarding the dollars. And so this is something that um, we do to support all of them. So I just want to share about some of the other benefits of this process and take you through some of these things because, of course, this is a learning experience for the students. There's a lot that they gain in terms of what we talked about through the video. They're learning how to lead other teams, management skills. So we try to focus on both professional skills, what they're going to need to learn to be successful and run their nonprofit business, 
but then we also want them to learn what's going to help them to be more well-rounded, philanthropic human beings. So things like public speaking and um, advocacy and things that will help them when they're going out and whatever they do in their lives. So some of the things that we, you know, the obvious ones are that they're creating a change in the community. They're feeling empowered. These are student-driven programs. These are just guided by the adults in their lives, but these are really them pushing forward and creating the solution and the direction of these nonprofits. Um, we do award community service hours for their time. So again, teens, that's very much forefront on their minds as they're going through their graduation criteria. I should state that not all of our students, and this is why we're talking to you as community partners, not all of our students are in traditional school settings. Um, we do have a lot of students who apply through public and private schools, but we have homeschooled uh, students, we have students in alternative learning situations. Um, so I think you know, the idea is that the student is in this age category, but it really isn't school driven um, in terms of who can apply. Just be, they just need to be a uh, young person that lives in Palm Beach County, and the services would be benefiting Palm Beach County. They receive a full year of youth development workshops and events. So that's a really huge part of what we do. We talked kind of about the process and the finals event, but that's really just a small part of the year-round uh, experience that these students have. As I mentioned, we we're hoping that we engage them in what are the steps to become a nonprofit. And if you're a nonprofit represented here with us today, you understand that's creating your mission. That's how are you going to deliver services? How do you know if you're successful and you're reaching those measurement tools to know that those services are being um, delivered to the right people and those are the services they need? All of those things we're trying to teach them how to really think very thoughtfully through the process and also to be able to know both qualitative and quantitatively how their program is doing. So we engage speakers, we have a robust curriculum that, that Corey is leading uh, so that we can have people in the profession speak to our students about all these numbers of things that we've mentioned today. That's a year-round process. Uh, the other thing is that, again, they're talking to mentors that are very high level of the community. The people that we have as our philanthropist investors and mentors are people who are um, have started their own organizations, they've been on boards, they've been in leadership. Uh, these are the people that are advising our students. They've been through the process themselves. They also are a lot of very uh, highly uh, you know, uh, skilled and successful business people who run their businesses and can give resources and connect with students to make sure they're delivering their services in the most efficient way. We also have the opportunity, you can't see him today, but Gary Widow, who's behind the scenes, um, helping us today is with Brand Story, which is our PR uh, firm that we use here at Philanthropy Tank. And we also engage them to teach our students how to you know, meet with the media, speak about their program, talk very um, uh, passionately, but very uh, directly about what they do, conveying that very quickly. All of us know the concept of elevator pitches and being able to very, very uh, succinctly share what you do with people when you meet them for the first time. And then obviously networking with other leaders and gaining skills, as we've mentioned, those are all huge parts of this program. Um, we are very proud that in our years of, uh, in existence, we've had many students that have gone on to um, receive accolades and scholarships. You can go on our website to learn more. Uh, we had our student, just this past Pathfinders um, experience, who started a program called Money Buddies for financial literacy that he teaches to, to at-risk young people. And that um, he applied and he was receive the award for academic excellence for Pathfinders. So a lot of our students, based on their community service and just being well-rounded, have really um, had a lot of good things to say about going through this process with Philanthropy Tank. What can you expect from us next, and what are we actually asking for you, asking from you? So um, I've been sending emails to you all. Uh, you probably are tired of hearing from me. And 
I encourage you to reach back out to me. If this is interesting, if you're interested in this, or know any young people who uh, fit the bill, who would um, be able to participate in this process, whether they do or don't have an idea, reach back out. I want to send you a toolkit that has um, email blurbs in it so that you can um, send that to um, some of your other partners or send it to parents or send it to students themselves where you don't have to create the language, the language is already there for you. Um, we'll also include um, a blank application so you can see the questions that we ask and how we ask them so that you can um, understand what we're requesting of the young people. Um, also want to send you some of um, last year's, two of last year's finalist videos, so um, year six, uh, two videos from the finals event, which you can find on YouTube. I'm um, going to send you two of those uh, videos just so you get a flavor of what we expect to see from young people at the upcoming finals event. And um, also I encourage everyone to visit our website. We have a variety of tools there. Um, that help young people get this done. So again, um, what we are asking for you to do is uh, propagate this program to all young people you know so that um, they can make the change we all want to see in our communities. Here is our contact information. Thank you, Corey. I'm just going to add, so I think besides looking for teens to be able to share this opportunity, especially if you have team programs that you're working with. We really love for you to identify some candidates. They can be singular. They can also be a team of people together who work on a project. You might already be doing something within your organizations that would be a great opportunity and a great platform to build on to have the students take that again and know that that's a great, um, you know, that you're an automatic partner for them in going through this process. So those are things to think about. So I think not only is it about finding the teens, it's also shared with us what your needs are. So if we have other teens, we can direct them your way. And you'll have the opportunity to maybe um, share with them what you're doing. And they can go from there and create and frame an idea from that. We're all here and available to help you with any questions. We do have application workshops ongoing. So if you have a team you would like to make a join in for one of our existing workshops, they can sign up for that through our website, find out more information, right, Matthew, Corey? Um, they're nodding, you may not see them, but they're nodding. Uh, but, they, but you can have them sign up, or what we'd like to say is if you already have teams you're working with and you're meeting with those, and you have an already a gathered group, um, we are welcome to do, or we're happy to do a road show. Um, we can come to you and share this with your students um, when you're already meeting with them so that you don't have to create another opportunity to gather them. We can do it virtually, uh, you know, and set up a time, uh, whatever is most convenient. But our goal right now is to meet with as many teens as we can so they have the opportunity to apply.